Hey everyone, I'm Landon with LMR.com. The 2000 Cobra R Mustang was and is still one of the baddest production Mustangs ever made. In this video, I'm going to talk about all things 2000 Cobra R, what they are, why they were so unique, and for lack of a better word, why they kicked ass. So if you're a diehard Mustang enthusiast, then you have likely heard of this car right here, the 2000 Cobra R. Like the R models before it, this Mustang is a refined corner carving monster right off of the showroom floor that was stripped of any factory amenity that wasn't needed for track use or that would add excess weight. Ford's special vehicle team took just 300 performance red Cobras and turned them into one of the most unique high performance cars Ford has ever built. Some quick performance stats before we dive into more details on the 2000R. Motor Trend was able to catapult this car from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.4 seconds. They ran a 12.9 quarter mile, trapping 110.8 miles per hour, and pulled 1.02 Gs on the skid pad. Starting at the heart of this beast, the 2000 Cobra R is motivated by a potent, special built, double overhead cammed 5.4 liter engine that cranks out 385 horsepower and 385 pound feet of torque at the flywheel. This naturally aspirated mod motor featured reworked four valve heads that flowed roughly 25% more air than the 1999 Cobra cylinder heads and specific camshafts that featured higher lift and improved durations. The inner workings of the engine consisted of flat top pistons that set the compression ratio at a rather mild 9.6 to 1 and those were connected to Carrillo billet steel connecting rods. Atop the 5.4 was an engineering masterpiece, a custom two-piece intake manifold with properly suited R badging that was specifically designed with high revving in mind. Because of the taller deck and massive intake manifold, SVT had to develop custom motor mounts and crossmember to lower the engine 12 millimeters. To help keep the engine cool, SVT used a massive aluminum radiator. When you build a cool car, they almost all require a healthy sound and exhaust system. Well, in order to develop an unmatched exhaust tone, the SVT engineers turned to Vorla to achieve the raspy race car growl they were wanting. The first stop in the exhaust system is a pair of tubular steel exhaust manifolds that connect to a catted X-pipe. From there, the exhaust snakes its way underneath the car and out of the sides, exiting just before the rear tires. Not only does that make it a pain to lift the car, but the reason for the side exit exhaust is to make room for the massive 21-gallon fuel cell at the rear of the car. Unlike past Cobras, SVT turned to a Tremec T56 transmission and a B&M Ripper shifter to ensure positive, smooth gear changes. The T56 was a six-speed manual gearbox and was very similar to the one found in the Dodge Viper. Hence the terminology Viper Spec most of us have heard throughout the years. Because of its road course DNA, the 2000 Cobra R was equipped with an IRS R independent rear suspension that was outfitted with beefier 31 spline axle shafts, a gyro disc hydromechanical differential with speed and torque sensitivity, and a 355 gear ratio for quicker acceleration. The power was hungered to the ground thanks to Bill Steen dampers at all four corners and SVT specific IBOX springs that lowered the car an additional 1.5 inches in the front and one inch out back. Since the Cobra R had corner carving tendencies, the spring rates and sway bar thicknesses were amped up to reduce body roll when tossing the R into the corners. The front rate was 800 pounds per inch and the rear rate was 750 pounds per inch, which was a huge jump over the non-R Cobras, which had rates of 500 pounds in the front and 450 pounds in the rear. The front sway bar had an overall thickness of 28 millimeters and out back, the sway bar measured in at just 26 millimeters. Cars with big engines, they need big brakes. The fronts feature 13-inch rotors with massive Brembo four-piston aluminum calipers and grabby Galfer racing brake pads. The rear setup was standard issue Cobra, which consisted of an 11.65-inch rotor, single-piston caliper, but the 2000R was equipped with one millimeter thicker racing pads for additional bite. Like any well-equipped race car, the front brakes were cooled via brake cooling ducts that pulled air from the fog light openings. The exterior of the 2000 Cobra R is by far its most notable features. Three simple yet drastic changes made this iconic Mustang stand out from the rest, first being the massive rear wing. It is a non-adjustable pedestal style wing that generates the much needed downforce while on the track. 
Second being the exclusive cow hood that features a large fluted bulge to provide additional styling and clearance for the behemoth intake underneath. Lastly, the truly distinctive front chin spoiler that is attached to a 1999 Cobra bumper with Desus style quarter turn fasteners. The chin spoiler features an aggressive splitter designed to help generate downforce and feed fresh air into the engine compartment. Because of the side exit exhaust, a V6 bumper was affixed to the rear, which created a cleaner look. The 2000R also shared the unique taillights from the 1999 Cobra that incorporated dedicated amber turn signals. Continuing with the road race theme, SVT outfitted the R with a 21 gallon fuel cell and a retuned steering rack for more road feedback and razor edge responsiveness. While the exterior featured a custom look, the interior at first glance doesn't look drastically different from its non-R code counterparts. The major enhancements included a set of killer Recaro race seats to help keep both the driver and the lucky passenger firmly planted in their seats while hauling the mail. Now speaking of passengers, you only get one. That's right, the rear seats have been deleted from the factory. The SVT engineers even removed the unneeded options and materials such as sound deadening, undercoating, stereo, and the air conditioning. The speedometer reads out a whopping 180 miles per hour to let you know this factory race car it flat out means business. The dash does still have the AC control knobs to keep the stealthy factory appearance. One of the fewer power control features that remain are power windows, locks, and mirrors. To further ensure the power stays connected to the ground, the SVT designers created the iconic Cobra R wheels. Their 18 by 9.5 inch five spoke design allowed for use of a wide tire, which establishes a larger footprint. From the factory, these wheels were wrapped with a 265 4018 BF Goodrich G-Force tires that were engineered for both track and street use. The 2000R Mustang featured a full-size spare, just in case you ever needed a backup. Without a doubt, Ford's special vehicle team created an engineering phenomenon and set the bar for track-focused production Mustang for years to come. In the year 2000, this car could be had for a super cool $54,995. Personally, I like data. If you were to take that price tag and plug it into an online inflation calculator, the same car in 2019 would be around the $80,000 mark. This particular 2000 Cobra R is one of the 300 that were built and has been personally owned by Shannon Guderian, who is also the owner of LMR since the early 2000s. Unlike other folks, Shannon has religiously tracked his Cobra R several times and lives by the simple motto, cars aren't meant to be driven. To see more videos like this one, as well as how-to and product review videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Of course, like and share this video with your friends, and don't forget to turn on notifications, that way you're notified every time we release new content. As always, for all things 1979 to present Mustang and SVT Lightning, keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.